Right, this is just a general view of the truss bridge that you're about to build. Right, this is the trussel bridge that you're about to build. Quite a large model, but then it is designed to take a garden railway 32 or 45 millimetre track and 16 millimetre scale. What you see is what you get. Uh, you've got two supports, one at each end, which you can fix to your layout. The bridge is then removable on two pins at each end to lift off. I'll just move down to the other end. So that's the other end. Uh, the actual length of the bridge that lifts out is an exact same length as a piece of Pico flexible track. So that will fit into there quite nicely. I'll just uh, remove... Right, I have to bear with me as I do this with two hands uh, to show you the fixing system. So the actual... you lift off the two covers. Now you don't want to glue those on otherwise you want to lift the bridge off. And then quite literally you can see that the bridge lifts off at that point. I'll just move that out of the way so you can see the system. So what we have is, is a pin and another pin and they locate up underneath the bridge. So it's a really simple system and aligns itself. So I'll drop him back on. It really is that simple. Now for fixing these on, I leave that up to you. What you can do, of course, is you can put a, a steel plate in there or a magnet in there. Uh, again, a small steel plate on the bottom of there. So it sticks on there with a magnet. Uh, choice is yours. But obviously don't glue them. Otherwise you won't want to lift the bridge off. It's quite complex. Build time probably two, maybe three days. Uh, okay, I knew what I was doing when I built this, and I could. It's about six or seven hours for me to build one up. It takes a single track, and um, that's what you're going to build. So please enjoy. The video is in a number of different parts. You've got a part that just builds the ends. You've got another part that builds the cross braces that go on the top. And then you've got the longer video for building the complete bridge. I've added a little pathway and a handrail that runs down the side, although the track still lives centrally. That's just my own take on it. It's not designed on any particular bridge. It's just what I thought looked good after looking at various pictures of other bridges. Well, there we go. Off you go. Have fun. Take your time. Do lots of dry runs. And I think you'll be very pleased with the end result. Right, so we're now about to build the actual bridge itself. And you'll need some bits and pieces to assist you with this. You'll need a very flat surface. Uh, to work on. Typically something that's about a metre long by 20 millimetres thick uh, by let's say uh, 300 millimetres wide. You'll need some cling film or a very thin plastic bag. Uh, what I use as a work surface is a, a bit of a from MFI or not MFI uh, from B&Q a uh, piece of I think it's melamine shelf or something like that, uh, which is a, a smoothish flat surface, which is all I've got set up here. Uh, you'll also need some super glue, some white PVA glue, and you'll also need what I would call a straight edge, uh, because you need to push things up against it to make sure that everything is in line. Now, for me, I just happen to have a long piece of three millimeter wood as you can see there um, you can obviously get some aluminium angle from B&Q or uh, another piece of this particular 
material, but only say 10 centimeters wide. But you need something that you need to push up against a straight edge. Right, so the first thing to do is to cover the area we're going to be working in. So if you go halfway down your flat piece, either put some cling film over it or take a, a thin bin liner, cut it and open that up and stick it over. This is so that when we're gluing, the glue doesn't stick to the board and you end up with your bridge stuck to the board. So I'll just prepare that now. Right, so I'm all set up now. I have my plastic sheet, my straight edge, and the first part we're going to put together is the base. So there's two items which look pretty similar. Got writing on one end that says face down, and then we have another one which again is identical, again the words face down. Now to build this, you take difficult because the camera doesn't have a wide lens as you can see we've got two there so with the wording face down facing up so that's like a dirty side facing up you'll find that they will go together as I will demonstrate I've got enough room here yep let's move my glue out of the way so again onto a flat surface you'll find that they will engage As I've done there and then pull your straight edge in trying to make sure you don't get any uh, bin liner or plastic bag caught in the edges so again just make sure it goes up firmly against it this bit is quite crucial, otherwise you'll end up with a banana for a bridge. So pull them in close, tight up against the straight edge, and push together as well at the same time. And then using super glue, and have a tissue ready as well, and we can start. So pulling together to the straight edge, and making sure they're pulled together themselves. So you sort of need three hands for this. And then just add a little bit of super glue into the join at this end here. It should run down to about uh, a centimeter, maybe two centimeters worth. And again, make sure you're pulled against the straight edge and they're pushed together. And hold that for a couple of minutes. And then wipe off the excess glue. And then move over to where the actual tang part is. Again, making sure that we're pulled against the straight edge and together. And just go around the tang. And then down the rest of the straight edge, down to the join line. Again, wipe off any excess. Then we can move over to the far end. And again, make sure it's pushed down firmly. And 
just slowly work your way along. It is possible to do this with a white PVA glue where you'd have to coat the end surfaces with the glue before you put it together. Leave that now a good five minutes to make sure the glue does go in fact gone off. First thing to do is to take some sandpaper. Again, I'm using an 80 grit here. And just lightly go over the area you do. Make sure there's no high spots. I'm not looking to Sand it right down, just get rid of the high spots. Again, wear a mask when you're doing this. And then when you're happy that the glue has gone off, we can then turn it over. So remember, it is a glued surface. So lift it very carefully. Turn them over. And we do exactly the same this side, very, very lightly. To remove any glue that's come through. Right, that completes the base. You can check this side if you want, that we've got a nice straight edge. No reason why there shouldn't be, which we have. So we can now move on to the next section. Right, the next part we're gonna to put together are the sides of which there are because it's a double walled there's one two three four five six seven eight of these to join to make up four walls so again they are handed so you need to find I'm going to just put it away so it looks like that shape and that shape and it's got to have the writing a and inside two written on it as you can see there and they will go together with the writing again facing up. Now, again, we need a straight edge to make sure everything is lined. So for this, I would recommend turning it upside down. Again, lay it onto your polythene sheet. So we're doing exactly the same as we did before with the base. So drop one on top of the other. So all the tangs line up, making sure you don't get any polythene caught between it. And then slide it up against the straight edge. So exactly as we did before, glue or PVA if that's what you've used. Again, we want to go firm against the straight edge and make sure that they're actually pushed together. So we start, as we did before, the edge that's closest to the straight edge, making sure it's flat. And remove any excess. Again, making sure that we are, in fact, up tight against the straight edge. It's very, very important. And we can move up to the other end. Again, make sure it's pushed down so it's flat on the baseboard.
This part you need to do in little sections because it's a thin section it can sort of take a, a bow shape. Then making sure it's firmly down and squeezed together. We can uh, do the rest of the groove or the rest of the joins that we haven't actually done yet. And get rid of any excess. Keep the tissue moving, that way it doesn't stick to it. Bit of time to dry and a very very light rub just to get rid of the enemy high spots And then when you're happy that it's square and the glue's gone off, very gently lift it up, make sure there's no white glue underneath, gently lay it down. And we do exactly the same again, very gently. Get rid of any high spots. And for confidence, check the top surface is square. So we can now take that and put that to one side. So that's A inside 2 done. Right, the next one I'm going to do is labelled. So again, they're all pretty similar. This one is labeled B inside two, as you can see. So I'm going to turn him round and we do exactly the same as we did before. So I'll we'll go ahead and do this one. And when you come back, I'll have done it and we'll move on to the next one. All right, that's my um, inside to be done and don't forget to sand both sides to make sure it's smooth right the next pair we're going to do are labeled d inside one and d inside one again same process together And up against the straight edge and we'll glue that one up now so if you'd like to go ahead and do that I will do the same I'm not forgetting to sand it down and then we'll move on to the next part okay right, I've now completed that particular one so that's inside 1D is now finished so we'll put that to one side and we move on to the fourth and last one. And this one, again, they're all identical, is labelled C inside one, C inside one. So literally as before, turn them round, slot together, up against the straight edge, making sure that none of the plastic is caught between it. And we glue this one. So if you'd like to do that, then we'll move on to the next section. Right, that's the fourth section done, which is inside 1C. So we can then put that to one side. And we can now move on to the next section, which is a little bit more tricky. 
Right, in the following section it shows fitting these parts. Now it's beneficial to give them a light sanding in a certain area to make them fit a little bit easier. The actual tangs here, if you just run a bit of sandpaper over each one just to take the, the corner off. Wants to be done on both sides. And both sides. I'm using an 80 grit here. And if you do that to each of them, that does make the assembly that much easier. And make sure there's no dust on them. Again, wear a mask when you're doing this. So if you'd like to work through all of those, and then we'll move on to actually assembling. The same treatment of taking the corners off also needs to be done on the long ones that are cut out and also on the flat pieces without any cutouts. So uh, they would benefit from the same thing. So on the cutout ones again as before, just to remove the corner. And don't forget to do the other side. And obviously the other side as well. And then on these long ones, without any cutouts, again, we do the same effect, just to remove the edge. Just work your way along. And again, don't forget to do both sides on both sides. Right, for the next section, which is putting the two halves or two skins together to make up one half of the bridge, you will need one of the sections you've already glued together, in this case A inside 2, as labelled there. You'll need two long straight ones, which are labelled E inside and E inside. You'll need two long perforated strips. These aren't labelled as such, apart from the word they have the word down or DWN added at each end. We'll obviously pick a pair that will join in the middle. You will then need 11 short ones as I call them. So you need 11 that look like that. We notice that they're slightly different from one end to the other. And then you'll need two longer ones. I'll just compare them so you can see the size. So I'll take one of the 11 shorter ones, and this is a longer one. And you can see that if I put them end to end, it's longer and has a flat section on the end. So you need two of those. Right, so what we'll start off by doing is adding, I mean, you've got to get these in the right slots, uh, otherwise it will screw it up completely. So take the two flat ones, don't glue them together because we need to give it a little bit of movement because it's wood and things are never the right dimension. So with inside and E, right. inside and E, we add that to the top of the two. You see you've got a slot and a slot. Well, this goes into the top slot, as I'm doing there. And that will drop down in. And then take the other one, which is again E. And you'll have to manoeuvre it around a little bit so that it engages in the T slot. And again, making sure the inside faces inside. So it engages in the T slot. and drops down into the slots on the base. So that's that part done. 
Then we move on to the top section here. So for that, again, same principle. So we take the one that's labelled down, and you have another one that's labelled down. And make sure you've picked a pair that will join together. So that goes with the word down like that. And that engages in the top slot all the way along. Just move that down so you can see what I'm doing. And then this one, again, like we did with this one, with the word down. And then we have to move it around a little bit to engage the T. And then push him down all the way along. Make sure it goes in firmly. So that does that part. Then if you take the two longer ones of this bunch, right, two longer ones, take the first long one. Now I'll just move the camera down so you can see what I'm going to do. So if we come down to this end, the longer ones go on the diagonals, or not diagonals, on the sloping one there. They'll only go in one way. If you try and put it in with the flat bit down there, you'll find that it doesn't actually go in. So it's the long bit towards the top. Doesn't matter which way round it goes, it's symmetrical. But I would tend to try and put the clean side facing out. So I've got the clean side up. So that's how it goes. Then we slot him in. And just touch the top and just touch the bottom. And then we take the other long one and I'll just move the camera down. And then at this end we do exactly the same. Again, we've got a clean side and a dirty side, so we go clean side once the face out and flat piece at the top. So we do that with it. And push him down in. And then using the remaining 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So using the remaining 11, again, you'll notice that, let's just deal with one first of all, that there's more protruding one side than the other. So it'll only go in one way. And it goes with the protruding bit towards the bottom. Again, doesn't matter which way around you put it in. Choice is yours. So we offer them in. Fiddle it around until it drops in. Maybe a tight squeeze. Try and push where the tangs are, otherwise you risk breaking the part. So then moving on to the next one. Now this one when you come to the middle one may be a tighter fit because obviously we've glued and we may get some glue running into the slots. So try and first of all, oh, he's gone in okay. If it is tight, I won't go. Then what you'll need to do is the actual tangs that are there, just run some sandpaper up and down each side to put a slight chamfer on the edge. Right, once they're all in, we then take another part to lay on top of there, which I will just go and get and show you which one we're going to use. Now that's an 
we've used A inside 2, which had two slots. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to have one on top. So I'll turn it round so we can see what we're doing. Now this one I'm adding is inside 1, and this is C. But you'll notice there's only one row of slots, so that's important. So the one underneath has got two rows, and this one's going to have one. So we turn it over, so we can't see the writing. I'll just gently lay them on top for a moment. And then if we start at one end, we line up a couple of the tangs. As soon as you get one in at that end, and then come down to this end, and just line up one there, and then come back down to the end again, and gently work your way along. You may have to manoeuvre the ones underneath slightly. So that they're a nice fit. It's all about working slowly along and pushing down. Don't worry about engaging them all the way at the moment. Right, let's uh, work my way all along there. So then go back to the beginning again. Make sure each one is pushed down fully. But only push where the tangs are. Slowly work your way up. Right, what I would recommend is to take a hammer, smallish hammer, uh, a piece of scrappy piece of wood that you've got lying around somewhere in the garage. I'm sure you have something somewhere. And then starting in the middle, just lay it over where the tangs are and just give it a So you do that all the way up one side and all the way down the other side. And then when you've finished all the way down there, gently pick it up, turn it over. And again, we repeat the process just to make sure everyone is fully, fully home. Right, when you're sure that that is completely flat and every single one is engaged, is to turn it on end and just have a visual look along the areas to make sure there's no gaps, top and bottom, and running down the sides. And then we're in a position now that we can glue this up. But this is very crucial that this is done on a flat surface. And what we do is, we, I tend to get a couple of cans of beans. There we go. Uh, other beans are available. Right, so these I should tend to stick one at one end, as you can see there, and I'll put one at the other end. And then we go back to the middle. So we're definitely down on a flat surface, and now what we have to do is to glue each one of those tangs where they come through with the super glue. So this is quite a laborious job. I'll show you a couple and then I'll leave you to go ahead and do your own. So
So you need some super glue, a tissue, and we start in the middle. Make sure it's pushed down firmly and give it just a little tap of the hammer just to make sure. And then starting with the first tang, second, and the one that comes down there. And again, I would do the next one. And the next one. And the next one. And the bottom one. That gives it time to soak in. And then wipe off any excess. Try to wipe up and down and it will chop across. Try not to get any glue on these parts because they don't get covered up. And then I would work along to the next one. Again, making sure that we're firmly engaged. And so on, working your way along to that side and then working along to that side. So I'll do that. When you come back, we'll move on to the next section. Right, I've done all of mine, but don't forget, it's not just those and those. We have to do those that run along there as well. So I will now do those. And when you come back, we'll move on to the next section. Right, so I've now glued all my tangs. So the thing to do now is, again, make sure the glue is thoroughly dry. And to very gently, again with some fine sandpaper, just skim over where you glued to make sure there's no hot spots. I've got a thing about hot spots, to make sure there's no high spots. Just gently. Try not to rub over where the crosses are, the thin pieces, as they don't get covered. And you need to leave the hard shell of the MDF on the outside. And then when you come back, I'd have finished that bit. Right, so having sanded that completely down, then making sure you have a mask, clean the area, Make sure there's no loose bits on top. And then we turn them over. Lay them down. And again, we just tap in down, make sure that it's firmly down. And then we do exactly the same as we did on the other side. Again, starting at the middle. And uh, we apply the glue again. So I'll go ahead and do this side. And then uh, if you'd like to do the same. So we do all the tangs. So uh, when I come back, I'd have completed this side. Right, so that's uh, that side now glued and sanded. Don't forget, you need a smooth surface on both sides. So that is one side of the bridge done. So we now have to go and repeat that process on the other side. So I'll run through that quickly for you. So as before, in this case we're using B inside 2, as you can see there. So we lay that down onto our plastic sheet. 
Right, so we'll start off on the other side. So I've laid down inside 2B facing up. And then in this case we're using F inside and F inside. We've taken off the corners to help it go in. So again, this one goes into the top slot with F inside so you can't see the writing. So he drops down in. And again, we do this one exactly the same. You'd have to jiggle it a bit to get the T slot in first and then drop him down in. And that drops in nicely. Then we take the two longer ones. Again, they've got the word down and then a slot and the word down and a pin. So they go together. But he wants to go such that the word down faces down. So we'll put this one in first. Goes in the top. And like before, check the word down is in that direction. And we fiddle again with the T slot until it drops down in. And then we take the two longer ones. We'll just sort those out. There's one longer one. And I'm just having a problem finding the other one. There he is. That's the other long one. And we'll just move down to the end. So you can see what we're going to be doing. As before, Take a long one, you'll notice there's a flat piece and a non-flat piece. There's what I call a clean side and a dirty side. I try and set the clean side facing that way. And you want the big flat piece towards the top. And that goes into there. And then if we slide down to the other end, And we repeat the process down here again, flat part towards the top, clean side facing out. And we drop him in. And then we work our way along with these. If you remember from last time, the actual bigger section, so you've got a big section there and not there, so the big section goes towards the bottom. Then push them in, but push on the tabs and we'll knock those in a bit firmer in a minute. So just work our way along. Alright, so we can now make sure they're all pushed firmly home. Just push down on the tab, otherwise you're risk breaking where the crisscross is. Right, we're now in a position where we can add the next part on top. This is where we have to come back to the middle so you can see what we're doing. So I've now got inside 1D. So we position that so we can't see the writing. And as before, gently lay it on top and then down at one end, just locate one of the tabs in, so it drops in, and then down to back the other end. And again, line up one that go in this end. Keep it tight. There we go. And then we can go back down to this end. And like we did before, we work our way along, manoeuvring them underneath until they drop in. Then out with the trusty hammer. I'm 
previous one. So we do all of that and then we glue it exactly the same as we did before. Turn it over and glue the other side and not forgetting to sand it down. So I'll go ahead and do that and when you come back we'd have finished two sides.